Hi, so in this video, we're going to take a look at a condition called bicuspid aortic valve. First, we're going to see what a normal tricuspid semilunar aortic valve looks like, and then we're going to compare the normal valve with three leaflets to the pathological bicuspid valve with only two proper leaflets. So here's a few seconds of the CAE Vemetics 3D model heart beating. Uh, this view is if we were looking straight down at the top of the patient's heart from above. There we go. Uh, I'm going to pause here and point out what's what so we can be properly oriented. This is, of course, the front of the patient. This would be the ultrasound beam on the patient's chest. This would be the back of the patient. This is the patient's right side. This is the right atrium. Uh, and this is the right ventricular outflow through the pulmonic valve. The pulmonic valve is also a semilunar valve with three leaflets. This is the patient's left side over here. So this is where left ventricular blood uh, flow passes through the aortic valve. This is the aortic valve and out into the systemic circulation. So being tricuspid, you can see the aortic valve here uh, has uh, three semilunar valve leaflets. I'm going to play the video. And you can see that it normally closes fully and prevents regurgitation or backflow into the left ventricle. Now we're going to change views and we're going to take a look at an ultrasound image of a proper tricuspid aortic valve. So this is an ultrasound image of a closed aortic valve. You can see the one, two, three valve leaflets about to form a tight junction here. This is what it should look like uh, normally when it's almost closed so that it again can prevent backflow from the aorta into the left ventricle. Now we're going to change views again in order to take a look at the same presentation of a pathologic bicuspid valve. So we've switched views and our ultrasound scan is going to start at the midventricular area down near the apex of the heart and the slice that we're going to see is going to rise up through the ventricles. Here's the ventricles here. This is the left ventricle and this is the right ventricle. Um, then we're going to pause the video so we can compare the view of the problematic bicuspid aortic valve and then look at it next to the view of a closed tricuspid valve. So we, we see here as we rise up through the ventricles, we, uh, I'm going to stop the video right here at about the aortic valve level coming in right there. Now I'm going to play a few seconds of video in slow motion so you can see the pathological bicuspid valve open and close. You can see here where it doesn't shut. This is just one, two leaflets that are closing, and this area never actually gets sealed off to prevent regurgitation into the left ventricle. And here we can finally see the difference between a tricuspid and bicuspid aortic valve. The uh, nearly closed tricuspid valve is over here on the left, and uh, the bicuspid valve is here on the right, which is as closed as it can be, given that it is missing an entire valve leaflet. In this case, this one right here. That one's just gone. So a, a few things that we need to know about bicuspid aortic valve uh, are that it is a congenital condition, which is often uh, present at birth, or if you have it, it will be present at birth. Um, but it's often not detected until later in life. Um, a few common complications of this can be tiredness, chest pain, or an irregular heartbeat. And a common presentation you might find, if you have this on exam, is going to be a heart murmur. In this case, uh, regurgitation, which you can sometimes hear with your stethoscope, immediately after the second heart sound. Uh, this sound is the sound of blood flowing from the aorta up here back into the left ventricle. Um, alternatively, uh, you might also detect this on MRI or, of course, if you're performing a cardiac ultrasound. So that is a view of bicuspid aortic valve on ultrasound. I hope that was helpful. Thanks a lot.